if you're a person who takes notes, write this down. This is the most important thing. We have to find more fear, learn how to use it as fuel, and scare ourselves every day. Patrick Sweeney has built an amazing life based on fear, fear. He left the technology world behind after a life-changing event and is now a professional adventurer with a mission to help others find more fear in their life. Fear is probably the least understood, yet most powerful force we can tap into. He is a rock star in a whole bunch of things. From a second place finish in the Olympic rowing trials to founding three tech companies. Patrick is the first person to attempt cycling the seven summits, the highest peak on each continent. Patrick's done a lot of things that um, together don't exist usually in one person in terms of experience and accomplishment. That gives him a unique perspective and I think he's come up with an interesting way to talk about fear and turning it into something else. Please welcome the fear guru himself, an expert in creating a culture of courage, Mr. Patrick Sweeney. So we're gonna find more fear, we're gonna feed it. You can use fear to make radically better decisions. And if you want to hear the neuroscience, the psychology, and a shortcut to save you about 30 years of pain and suffering, say I. There's a small gland at the base of our brain called the amygdala, and it handles the three Fs. So you have a fight, flight, or freeze response as a little kid to save your life. The amygdala has been there for thousands and thousands of years to keep us from getting eaten by a woolly mammoth or trampled over or getting torn apart by a saber-toothed tiger. That's what, the, that's what the amygdala does. That's the great thing about it. But it was meant for a society and a world hundreds of thousands of years ago. The amygdala doesn't care about your happiness. It doesn't care about your success. It doesn't care about your future. It just cares about passing genes on to the next generation and keeping the race alive. The good news is, if we hack that amygdala, we can use it for superhuman performance. We get about 10% of our information from the conscious world. 90% of it is going into the amygdala and we don't even see that it's going on and we don't even recognize it. Now you guys, everyone out there, get your phones ready. This is an Instagrammable moment because this is their chance to shine. They can be stars now. Everyone can remember them as being the highlight of the Bixie conference. Or they could be tremendous failures. They could terribly embarrass themselves up here People could be talking about it forever. They could lose their relationship, maybe even lose their job. But don't think about that. You ready? Here we go. What just happened is something amazing that our body does. Our mind just did something incredible. What we just saw up here with those people, with Charlene's beating heart and, and Kyle's sort of tension in the shoulders and that sort of thing, are what I call fear tells. So what I want everyone to think about in the audience is what physical sensations you're feeling in your body because this is going to be really important. What I was surprised at during the talk ultimately was hearing, was one, feeling things. There's very few talks where you actually get to, uh, the, the speaker makes you physically feel something and identify those feelings which is really cool and I think. We created a change in our body. Nothing happened in the world. There was no threat no fear up here, the roof wasn't going to collapse, there weren't people coming in with guns and bombs, but our mind is so powerful that created a change physically in our body. That can be used for something very good and amazing performance, or that can be used for something very bad and really hurt you from a health perspective. I thought Patrick's talk was very inspirational. Um, the way he challenges us to face our fears and recognize our fears and seize our fears is not something that many people talk about. Um, so I don't think that most people know how to recognize those symptoms, let alone rein them in, embrace them, and then use them to your advantage. For 30 years, I lived with this, this terrible fear of flying. Every time I got on board or anywhere near an aircraft, I got more and more scared. And one thing that I found is this cowardice begets cowardice. And I'm thinking, well, why am I sitting here? I used to be afraid of everything. I lived my entire life in shame. 
and fearful and running from fear. And I didn't know it at the time, and I was trying to numb out my fear with drinking, with money, with material things. And so I sat there in the hospital, and all I could think about was my one-year-old daughter. Would the image she had of her dad be the guy who was too much of a coward to get on a plane and take her to Disney World? That's when I decided that I was going to kick that disease. And when I got out, I'd take flying lessons. Everybody has a fear frontier. Maybe it's failure. We all have a place where we come to where we've got a moment of fear. How we deal with that determines our future and our success. And what Patrick brought is so many of us talked about the fear frontier. And so many of us just stop before we ever get there. And he really talked about how do you know you're stopping so you kind of recognize those fear responses and then how do you turn it into performance? Break through that fear and use it as a, a source of energy for being successful. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to help you find more fear in your life because fear is the fuel. Courage is the spark plug. But fear is the fuel that changes everything in your life, every relationship, and it's even the fuel for love. And we'll talk about that, and it's unusual to think about it. It took me 30 years to discover this. Three years to figure out the science, working with the best PhDs, neuroscientists, psychologists from Harvard, MIT, you name it. And I realized fear is a fraud. It's just a movie we play in our mind. Most of the time, we play a horror movie. We seldom play a movie in our mind that's a comedy, that's a love story, that's an adventure. When something strange happens, we immediately flip and start playing that horror movie. And now, I'm gonna try and distill it down into 45 minutes to help you guys figure out where in your life you're avoiding fear and then where you can use fear to find more strength. An amazing thing happens. You produce this fear cocktail. It's adrenaline, it's DHEA, it's cortisol. All these enzymes start coursing through your body and you have superhuman powers. You ever heard the story about a 130 pound woman who can lift up a car to save her son who's trapped underneath it? Did you hear what Kyle said? He felt very alert. That's because when the amygdala switches on and you produce that fear cocktail, your body and your mind are primed to fight and you can have superhuman performance, but only if you know how to control it. All of a sudden, you've moved to anguish and panic, and your amygdala is gonna make the decisions for you. What you just witnessed was a fear tell. Every time your amygdala turns on and activates, you get the same reaction in your body. When we work with companies, what we try and do is get them out and actually do something to create those changes in their body so they start to recognize it. So then when you get an email from your boss or a client or something like that, and you feel those changes in your body, you recognize that the amygdala has been activated. The fear tells are what gives that away. That's why it's important you start to understand those, because we're going to use those fear tells to make radically better decisions. So when the amygdala kicks in and you get one of those responses, you have two choices. You can either let it go to waste, or you can use it for something good. You guys understanding your tells is going to release a whole new life for you. I guarantee you. What we're going to talk about today is how finding more fear can make your life better. That's the whole secret. We spend so much time trying to avoid fear, and that's just the opposite of what we want to do. You can either tame fear, or fear can tame you. Because there are only two ways in life to make decisions. Either out of fear, well, we might get fired, and I might not get this promotion. Those are all fear-based decisions, or out of opportunity. You're the author of your life. And that means every decision you're making is based on an opportunity. So what we're going to do today, push that fear frontier out. We're going to move it over so that you can stay in control of making decision in a high stress environment, in a fearful environment. And even better than that, you can use that fear for superhuman powers. 